Hello my dear students today we are going to analyze the poetry written by John Dryden which is titled Mac Flecknoe the analysis of the poetry is done by Dr Vinamrata assistant professor english from MSKB college Muzaffarpur now we must know that Mac Flecknoe is a satire written by John Dryden and it is an attack on thomas shadwell it was published in 1682 and it is written in a mock heroic tone now as we are going to start a detailed analysis of this poetry so it is advisable for all the students to take down the important points so they must be ready with the paper and a pen so that they can note down the important points john dryden the timeline is from 1631 to 1700 he was the first official poet laureate and he was given this office in 1668 actually dryden is one of the important writers of his time and that's why whole of the age in which dryden was writing is also called or referred to by the name of age of dryden and because dryden was very reasonable poet and a critic and a translator so that age is also called the age of reason so we must not forget that dryden is a poet of reason of wit and of good sense he is a poet of mind and not of heart so whenever you will see dryden writing he is always writing with wit and with intelligence there is always reason in his writing he is a very important critic and his famous critical work is essays on on dramatic poesy among his other works are absalom and achitophel medal hind and the panther mac flecno and religio medici so these were the important works of dryden now let's move on to the poetry as we have already talked that mac flecknu was published in 1682 it came as in response to shadwell's another work and we must always not forget that there was always a rivalry between thomas shadwell and john dryden the most important reason of it being was that they both belonged to two different political parties of that time dryden belonged to the tory party whereas shadwell belonged to the whig party the whigs were the anti royalists whereas the tories were the royalists so dryden supported the royalists and at that time there was a great civil kind a civil disruption between the two parties and because of that these two were literary persons and that's why they used literature by the means to attack one another so mac flecknoe is an attack a satire on thomas shadwell hurled out by john dryden now what is a satire a satire is a form of or a kind of literary device where the person or an incident or a situation is mocked upon in such a subtle way that it looks as if the person is praising the opponent but a kind of underlying mockery is done the poem is written in a mock heroic way already we have told that it is a satire it is a mockery but the lines are in written in heroic couplet heroic couplet was basically the form of literary device used to write epics what is a couplet a two lined stanzas stanzas or means two liners two liners which are rhyming and they are written in iambic pentameter so a heroic couplet was generally used for all the great epics which were praising some kind of hero but here the hero is shadwell who is obviously not a hero he is being mocked upon he is being ridiculed there he is being made fun of there that's why it is a subversion of the epic form 
it is a kind of uh, topsy turving the epic nature because epic is always in praise of someone but here he is not praising shadwell he is mocking shadwell that's why heroic couplet has been turned into a mock heroic poem so there are couplets rhyming couplets it is written in iambic pentameter but it is mocking the main protagonist that is shadwell now when we come to the title you see it is written mac flecno mac means son and flecno flecno here is richard flecno richard flecno was one of a writer who was one of a very inferior writers and his works were generally considered as nonsense so he says that son of flecno who is best fitted to be the son of flecno is shadwell because flecno was a a um, below average writer and shadwell is the son of flecno a below average writer that's why the name he's, he has given mac flecno that is son of flecno in this poem he is imagining uh, imaginary coronation of shadwell why because he says that flecno was the king of the realm of nonsense so there is a kingdom which is full of nonsense nothing sensical is there the law, the people there are all foolish the works there are all nonsenses which are being written there and its king is richard flecno but now why because richard flecno is becoming old he wants a suitable heir to his throne someone a young prince who could be his right successor and for that he chooses shadwell because shadwell is the best known for his nonsensical works and dryden clearly says that shadwell's works are full of nonsense there is no wit there there is no sense there that's why shadwell suits to be the successor of flecno shadwell suits to be the king of the realm of nonsense and that's why his coronation ceremony is observed in this poetry hence the poetry starts with these lines all human things are subject to decay and when fate summons monarchs must obey which means that everything any human body any human being who has taken birth has to die one day everything has to decay one day we are born to die so everyone has their life span everyone has a specific time in this world and then they have to go back so when fate summons when the time comes when the time of fate comes even if you are a monarch even if you are a king you have to obey to time it's not that you are a king then you will not die if you are a king or a pauper whatever you are you have to die some day or the other so here it starts with these lines saying that flecno that is richard flecno is now becoming old although he is a monarch although he is a king the king of the realm of nonsense but still he is becoming old and now he is going to the old age span of his life so it is right time for him to choose a successor for his throne why because he is very old now he is not capable of ruling that much a heir should be appointed to the realm of nonsense and that's why he went on to the search of a suitable successor who can rule him after the um, after he being as a king so who can rule the kingdom of nonsense and dullness so flecno decides that shadwell will be the best to do so why because shadwell has got no wit and he uses this line it's like darkness admitting not wit so he compares the mind of shadwell with darkness saying that shadwell has got no wit at all there is no light entering him and that's why he is the best one who has a claim to the throne there are other names also of inferior poets which he takes like james shirley and john haywood but he says that although haywood and shirley at some times uses some kind of wit in their poems some kind of logic in their poems but only shadwell is the person who never does 
any of such a thing and he gives reference to many of the plays of shadwell saying that in none of his plays there is any reference of any kind of wit and that's why shadwell is best suited for becoming the king of nonsense now he again mentions some kind of nurseries so nursery is a kind of basically nursery is a place where small children are groomed but here nursery is the acting school for young learners young actors and he says that there is nurse there are nurseries on the outskirts of the town means outside the town there are nurseries which teaches people acting the people coming out from these nursery schools means the actors who are coming out of it the writers who are coming out of it are of no good use and because flecknoe has studied and shadwell has also studied from such schools only they are mere fools and nothing else now when shadwell is coming for his ceremony of coronation he instead of the carpet which is generally laid down for a king the red carpet as we all know here instead of that carpet there are pages and books of uh, nonsensical writers all scattered around like limbs throughout they are scattered and that has made uh, the carpet of shadwells coming to the coronation and among the majority of these books the majority of the books are shadwell's own works and then when shadwell is there and his face is described when he arrives for the ceremony actually flecknoe's face is also described and it looks as if flecknoe's face is full of dullness because flecknoe is also a nonsensical writer and he is making shadwell his next successor and then uh, as the ritual the king has to take an oath to pledge to fulfill all the rights of a good king so shadwell also takes that oath and generally a king is given a crown and a scepter a scepter is the basically mark of being a king but here instead of the scepter in one hand he is given an ale ale is a kind of alcohol and in the other hand there is the copy of his own book titled love's kingdom again that book is very inferior book so he says that shadwell represents himself with that potent ale that is the alcohol and the love's kingdom in his hand instead of the king's symbols of scepter and uh, obviously a king will need a crown and instead of crown there are poppies on his head what is a poppy poppy is basically a plant a weed which grows uh, some kind of um, drugs uh, from from their drugs are made so actually shadwell was addicted to poppies he used to consume those drugs so instead of crown poppies are made in the form of a crown and that crown is placed on his head now when rome was found rome was an ancient city and it is said to be found by remulus who was the founder of rome so when rome was found romulus was visited by 12 vultures and that was a very good omen saying that this could be the place where rome can be established so here because the realm of nonsense is to be established 12 owls come to visit him and the people are very happy all the nonsensical writers who have attended the coronation are very happy why because they think this is an auspicious thing just like romulus was visited by 12 vultures in the same way shadwell has been visited by 12 owls and obviously owls here signify nonsensical things again because owl is always thought to be a stupid kind of bird and then um, dryden mentions the book the virtue so that is a book written by shadwell and he says that virtue so is such a unworthy book that the muse muse is the writer the greek gods goddesses which inspires a writer so the muse is also tragic because a muse should always be some kind of inspirational but here the 
muse of virtue so is a tragic muse so in every way and other way shadwell is rebuked by mocked by bryden in each and every line you will laugh upon after understanding the line how he is making a fool of shadwell and at last what happens that uh, uh, flecknow has come up with a uh, in a shabby kind of gown a long coat kind of thing a drabby thing instead of a robe which a king should wear he is wearing a kind of drabby dress a shabby dress a cloak and suddenly there is a gush of wind and uh, the trap door kind of thing opens from below and uh, flecknow falls in that flecknow is gone and what remains is just his robe which flies in the air and comes on the shoulders of shadwell signifying that after flecknow when flecknow is gone shadwell is only going to rule the realm of nonsense shadwell is only going to be the ruler who is who is having no wit at all who is writing all stupid plays and all stupid poems who has got no sense in his works and that he is going to continue his tradition hereafter so that is all about the poetry it is a heroic um, mock heroic poetry which is mocking shadwell which is ridiculing shadwell and dryden has outwittingly proved himself as a critic and as a great poet in this poetry so that is all for it if you have been benefited by the video then please do like share subscribe and comment on the video thank you